everyone and thank you for checking out this video. My name is Lucas, I'm a visualization artist and programmer, and today I'm hoping to introduce some of you to the cloth system in 3D Studio Max. Even if you are already a Max user and not using cloth, I'd say take a look because cloth has become a quick system that can be used to achieve some creative effects, and it creates a nice organic look which otherwise would take a long time to create. This will be a basic introduction on using cloth in 3D Studio Max. If you are new to 3ds Max or to its cloth system, this will quickly get you up and running with some basic steps and strategies, as well as some valuable problem solving ideas. In this example, I'm making an animation of a flag being hoisted up a flagpole and catching the wind on the way out. First off, I'm checking how my units are set up. It's important to work to scale when dealing with cloth, and when you're comfortable and aware of all of the settings, you can start to bend the physics a little bit more, but today I'm working in centimeters in this example. I have set up the animation range from negative 50 to 300 frames. Just having an idea of how long your animation will be is going to stop you from needlessly simulating. You'll notice here that I'm starting at a negative value. In this way, I give myself from frames negative 50 to 0 to set up the simulated cloth. We'll use the primitive geometry of a box and cylinder to represent the ground and the flagpole. The flag itself is a rectangle and we'll observe a real life example of how a flag is connected to a flagpole. So we will create two dummies which we will use to control the animation of the flag. With the flag selected, apply the garment maker modifier. We all need to be aware of how dense the geometry can become. Uh, a little goes a long way and extra smoothing can be added using a turbo smooth in the end. Here I opt for a density of just 0.2. Now we add the cloth modifier. Here I'll show a key technique to controlling a cloth simulation. If we take a look at the group sub object level of the cloth modifier, we can select the top right vertex and then press the make group button. Now, with that group selected, we can choose the node behavior to constrain just that selected vertex to the helper. We'll repeat this for the bottom right vertex, and now our cloth simulation will respect the links that we've created to the two dummies. Within the object properties, we can simply select a preset for our flag and press OK. We can create a wind force from the create sub warps menu, and with the flag selected, we can add the wind to the cloth forces. Now, if you press Simulate Local, you will see that you can interactively adjust the amount of wind. I modify its direction and add some turbulence for variation. Back in the object properties, we add the ground and the pole as collision objects, and then remove any animation on the flag using Reset State. We change our start and end frames to be in line with our animation range, and then we can animate the helpers remembering that our flag will be driven by the motion of those two dummies. The dummies are animated down to the ground at frame 0 where the animation will begin, and then by frame 100 the dummies are keyed back in their original location. We can also animate the strength of the wind so that the flag will appear to catch the wind as it is hoisted up. So with the animation in place we're ready to simulate our cloth object. Select the flag and press simulate. You can watch as the flag smoothly and perfectly simulates first time. A testament to your genius. Life is good and you'll surely soon be rich and famous. Hey, what the... Now, one of the true skills in cloth simulations is finding solutions to when things don't act exactly how you expect. Some of the properties I tweaked here was the collision depth of the flagpole, the direction of the wind, and increasing the subsample amount in the simulation parameters. Each time we need to press Erase Simulation and Reset State to get a clean starting point. Now with this successful simulation, you can choose an angle and drop your favorite flag in place as a texture, and there you have it. By just using these simple techniques, you can easily animate loads of different objects. Curtains, scarves, capes. You can lower the gravity and the scale parameter to simulate an area underwater effect. Or you can use the node group behavior to connect long streamers onto animated objects like cars or spaceships to achieve an interesting physics-based motion graphics effect. If you are able to make some cool cloth simulations after watching this tutorial, go ahead and share them with me either here or via my other social media platforms. It'd be really fun to see what you're working on. Thanks and good luck.